4.30 a.m., our satellites detected a storm approaching the Ares 3 mission site on Mars. The storm had escalated to severe, and we had no choice but to abort the mission. But during the evacuation, astronaut Mark Watney was killed. Hi, I'm Mike Simmel from fxguide.com for Wired. In a brilliant return to form, Ridley Scott shows us in The Martian what it would be like to actually survive alone on Mars. MPC and Framesaw provided most of the visual effects for the film, with Framesaw handling most of the Hermes ship and the weightlessness sequences, while MPC showed us what was happening down on Mars with the Martian landscape. Now, much like being stranded on Mars, to make this film, while the results are seamless and magnificent, even the smallest task proved difficult. For a start, it was meant to be a 13-month project, but as the release date got moved up, in fact, they lost four weeks, and they ended up with only 24 weeks for post-production. Compare that to Ridley Scott's Prometheus that had 34 weeks in post. The film was shot natively in stereo with red camera rigs, and they shot off speed to kind of help simulate some of the difference of gravity down on the surface. And this proved to be much harder than it sounds, as the desired frame rate wouldn't allow the red cameras to run in sync. So they had to shoot at 48 frames a second when they shot Matt Damon in the Jordan or on the soundstage and then speed it up in post. Now speed ups don't sound hard, but in stereo, even the smallest optical flow problem becomes a disaster for stereo. Of course, with the air being 96% carbon dioxide, all the astronauts wear spacesuits and are meant to have glass visors. But of course, glass visors would reflect the crew and the lights and the soundstage. So all the helmet visors you see in the film are actually added in digitally, which meant that for some shots, not only did they have to put the visors in, but do an entire CG build of the live action just for the correct reflections. Oh, and shooting in Jordan provided a great real environment. But again, a little more complicated than it need be because unlike Mars, Matt Damon was working under a rich, blue sky, sometimes with white puffy clouds, which meant every sky needed to either be replaced or somehow adjusted. Luckily, the MPC team invented a nuke compositing gizmo called Earth to Mars, which is a sort of a cross, I guess, between a colour corrector and an advanced hue shifting Kia, which meant the MPC team did not have to roto every single shot. Oh, and while they had one of the largest green screens in history in one of the world's largest sound stages, when they were shooting the epic storm sequence at the beginning of the film, they had to actually turn the green screen off. Finally, the footage from on set was beautiful from those twin red epic dragon cameras shot in 5K natively stereo. Unfortunately, Ridley and the editors decided to cut in a lot of GoPro footage from the astronauts' GoPro cameras, the ones you see on their shoulders. And so again, in a long line of technical aspects that I guess should have been easier, the footage had to be up converted from mono H.264 from the tiny GoPros to match in with the native large OpenEXR stereo plates that the main unit shot. Well, thankfully the team at MPC know how to science the shit out of VFX. For more behind the scenes action, please subscribe. I'm Mike Seymour for Wired. It's space, it doesn't cooperate. I guarantee you that at some point, everything's going to go south on you. And you're going to say, this is it. This is how I end.